Welcome back. In this lecture, we shall discuss the merits of chemistry. Is that how you call it the merits of chemistry? Or you call it applications of chemistry? We want to look at how important chemistry is to our lives. And how chemistry has influenced the story of mankind up to this point. Right? We shall look at the study of chemistry or the application of chemistry to our everyday lives. And also the application of chemistry to the industry and the world at large. So our everyday life means our day in, day out activities. Activities such as cooking, such as washing, to mention but a few of them. All right, we we'll look at chemistry to, in, that, in that application, and we we'll also look at chemistry to the world at large. Now, chemistry is very important, being a branch of science, right? And then we'll make a list of um, we have some of the fields chemistry has influenced, and then discuss them one by each so we can follow through up to that point. Now, chemistry is applicable in a number of fields. All right, number one, let's start with medicine. I don't know why I'm starting with medicine, but medicine, so that's applications of, of chemistry to medicine, to engineering. So medicine, to engineering, to agriculture, To agriculture, okay, to the industry, production industries, okay, to industries, question of medicine as a career, of, of chemistry as a career in biochemistry. Okay, we'll talk about this with medicine. Talk about this with biochemistry and medicine, take them together. Okay. So now what is the application? What is the application of Chemistry to medicine. Now, chemistry has played an important part of, uh, in medicine because chemistry, uh, medicine involves uh, the diagnosis of diseases, the treatment of those diseases, uh, researches, um, surgeries, and also the use of drugs. Now, one of our, everybody, um, you listening to this lecture at some point in your life are dependent on drugs or probably still depending on drugs to cure one ailment or the other. Now, the production of drugs is a complex chemical process, okay, given a branch called pharmacy, because pharmacists are the ones involved in drug production. And then what it is, they mix chemicals in pure forms, all right, to produce drugs which we consume to treat our diseases or to cure our diseases. Now, drugs, by the way, are chemical compounds. They're chemical compounds that are excellently pure. They're, they're, they're chemical compounds in their quintessential form, the purest form you can have it. All right. And now you know why it is important for drugs to be very pure because number one, you only need very minute amount of them to act. And then number two, they're going into your body. So you don't want them to be contaminated or you don't want them to be polluted or something. Right? So now the production of these drugs and then the application of these drugs in our bodies is chemistry because once these drugs get into the body, there is a chemical reaction that happens between these drugs and your body cells. All right? And when these drugs interact with the body cells, they, they go to the affected area and then they kill the affected germs or causative organisms. In short, they kill the, the, the diseases in question inside the body cells. And then chemistry has happened. Why? Because you've used matter, in this case, which is the drug, okay, to cause a change. In this case, curation of a disease in a body or in, a, in an host. Medicine has, chemistry has played an important part in medicine, number one, in the production of drugs, in the action of these drugs in our bodies, even in the action of food, foods and nutrition, all right, in our health, because um, when certain patients have certain diseases, right, there are certain meals they can eat, there are certain meals they cannot eat. So you see, the doctors tell them to depend on certain meals and shy away from other um, types of meals. For example, if you're diabetic, you shy away from sugary foods, from sugary, um, from sugary drinks, and um, sweet foods, right? Because cons consuming sugary foods would worsen that illness, which is diabetes. Now, the knowledge of chemistry has helped us understood that sugar, okay, interacting with body cells can increase their sweetness level, right? And then it can also increase the disease level such that 
the, the body can filter out how much sugar you have in your blood. And then the sugar accumulates in the blood and it further worsens the diseases. So the study of chemistry has helped us in a long way in the improvement of medicine. Another one is engineering. How has chemistry helped us in engineering? Long, long before now, you would realize that certain metals, okay, are, are highly subject to corrosion. Now imagine you have a very large industry or a large engineering firm. And then in this engineering firm, you have metals running from one point to another in the firm, all right? You have connections of metals to metals. And then you realize that these metals are subject to corrosion. Then it means that after five years or 10 years, these highly expensive, highly sophisticated metal networks begin to suffer corrosion. And this corrosion can cause a very high level of damage, both financially, all right, and in terms of goods transported from one point to another. And it can, can lead to a very big loss in that engineering firm. So what has chemistry helped us do? Chemistry has helped us with the knowledge of electroplating to coat these metals so we can electroplate these metals, making them corrosion resistant. Now, if not for the knowledge of chemistry, we wouldn't be able to preserve these metals, right? And then we would suffer the, the um, problems such as corrosion and all sorts, reaction with oxygen, reaction with acids, to mention a few of them. So it means if you have acid rain, for example, it washes away your metals, exfoliating their surfaces and leading to great amount of losses. But then the knowledge of chemistry and the knowledge of electroplating has helped us understood how to coat or preserve our metals from corrosion. Another way chemistry helped us in engineering is extraction of metals. Now, if not for the knowledge of chemistry, we wouldn't be able to extract metals from the earth crust. Most metals are highly reactive and they exist in ores, in naturally occurring forms, which we call ores. Now, these metallic ores are, are practically needless and useless except for the fact that we are able to mine them, we are able to extract the metals needed, and are able to process them into finished products. And that can only be done with the knowledge of chemistry. Another one we have on the list is agriculture. How has chemistry helped us in the field of agriculture? Now, you know, most agricultural producers um, thrive well under the influence of manure and the influence of fertilizers. Fertilizers are chemical compounds. Manures are chemical compounds. Now, the knowledge of chemistry has helped us synthetically produce fertilizers depending on the crops we grow, all right, and depending on the region we grow them. So it means that we can, in the, labor in the laboratory, produce chemicals and add them to our crops to increase the crop yield, increase their resistance to diseases, and increase their viability. If not for the knowledge of chemistry, maybe we wouldn't be able to produce viable crops in large amounts and economically friendly crops. Crops that are meant to grow for five years under the influence of fertilizers can grow for three years. That is an advantage and chemistry has helped us achieve that. Another influence of chemistry, or another way chemistry has helped us is in, the, in the industries. Now, we said this on our engineering that in the industry, you can have large metals, for example, in, say, Coca-Cola industry or in Bonvita industry, Bonvita factory. Now, if you go to these industries, you see big metal pipes running from point to point. Or even in petroleum refining industries, you see these big metallic pipes running from one part to another. Now, imagine you have petrol refined, all right, in one part of the factory. Imagine you have petrol refined in one part of this factory and it's transported to another part of this factory for storage, all right? Now, this transportation can only be done through large pipes, right? So it can contain large amount of petrol at, give, at every instant of time. Now, imagine you have the interior walls of this pipe corroding, all right? You have them suffering corrosion. What happens? It means that as petrol is being transferred from the site of production to the site of storage or as Coca-Cola is being produced from the site of production to the bottling site, right? You have these metals washing into these liquids. And then if this metal wash into the liquid, and then you bottle up Coca-Cola with, with crumbs of metals, you know what that will do to your health when you consume that.
right? It could even cause serious problems to the company because they can be sued and it will be, they'll be made to pay heavily for the damage. Now, but the knowledge of chemistry has helped us in electroplating. So you can electroplate these metals, right? And prevent the washing of these unwanted materials, unwanted metals into petrol that can ultimately cause the knocking of your engines or into Coca-Cola that can cause um, serious health effects. Another way chemistry has helped us is as a career. Somebody like me now exploits chemistry as a career because what careers do you have in chemistry? You have research, you have lecturing, you have teachers, and to mention but a few of them. Now, chemistry teachers would be jobless practically if not for chemistry. Chemistry lecturers and chemistry researchers would be jobless if not for chemistry. So chemistry has served as a means of employment for lecturers, for teachers, for researchers, you know, and it has given them a source of livelihood. Another way chemistry has helped us is in biochemistry. Biochemistry focuses majorly on research, how chemicals can help improve the quality of life. That is why you have the word bio. Bio means life. Chemistry comes from chemistry. So how chemicals can be used to influence the quality of life is called chemistry. It's called biochemistry. So maybe it's food or drugs or, 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 um, or, or radiations or anything. How you can convert chemistry into life, like into humans or animals or plants, right? Improving their quality of life is called biochemistry. Another way you have chemistry important to us or advantageous to us is in the production of energy. There is a branch of chemistry we call nuclear chemistry, where you have nuclear reactions, um, the destroyer or the, produ the production of certain um, nuclei under high energy, all right, to produce energy in the form of electricity or in any form of your choice, depending on what you desire. So that when you convert chemicals to energy, then you've done, you've, you've, what you're dealing with is nuclear chemistry. So far, you are dealing with the nucleus of those atoms, of those chemicals, right? So when you break a nucleus, all right, and convert it to energy, then you've done nuclear chemistry. And technically what nuclear chemistry does deals with is converting atoms and making them produce electricity or making them produce energy in the form of electricity, in the form of heat, etc., etc. Advanced countries like the US and China depend on um, nuclear reactions for the production of energy because, number one, it gives large amount of energy per very little amount of nucleus. So which means that you can save cost compared to the combustion of gasoline or your kanji dam or whatever, right? Nuclear chemistry serves as a more efficient and a more, um, a more productive way to produce energy. Just that the disadvantage here is it is very dangerous. So if you can't curtail it, you could have an explosion and you can destroy an entire community or even an entire state by just the slightest mistake, right? But give or take, chemistry has helped us in the production of energy. So here we've listed um, a number of ways chemistry has been applicable to life. And now I hope now you can see how important chemistry is, right? Now in the next lecture, we'll look at the disadvantages of chemistry, the demerits of chemistry, because whatever has an advantage should have a disadvantage. So how has chemistry been a disadvantage to us? How has it been a disadvantage to our everyday lives? Join us in the next lecture when we talk about the disadvantage of chemistry.